Lights? Camera? Action. Alright. I thought I'd just shoot a little video. I know the masses want to see me at work, so I figured I'd show you how I'm ready and or how I ready myself and the tools that I use. Number one, snake hook. The only thing I ever use a snake hook for is for pulling open drawers because it hurts snakes, especially big ones, to pull on them with a snake hook. It can break ribs. Number two, hemostats. The longest ones you can get because when you're j <laughs> when you're juggling rats, you don't want the snake to grab you on the arm instead of grabbing the rat. Number three, your phone, because if that's your preferred method of communication and you tell people you answer the cotton pick and phone from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m., you better have the cotton pick and phone with you, which I always do. So call me if you need to during the week. Number three. Oh, I can't count. Number four, my little headlamp. Little flashlight in case I need to take a look inside of a cage because it's dark with the light above. It's dark inside the cage. But today, I happen to be feeding. So we're going to see me feed a couple of snakes. I know you've never seen this before. But actually, you've never seen the boa file feed a snake before. Because I've never done this before for a camera. Rat on the hemostat. Door open on a boa file plastics cage. Are you getting the snake too, or are you just shooting straight down the aisle? No, I got the snake. Okay, get the snake. <laughs> snake grabs the rat and wraps. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Sometimes I wiggle it a little to make them think that they're actually killing it, which of course they aren't because they're already dead. Then I latch my doors on my all original boa file plastics cage. <laughs> I didn't peek over anybody's shoulder to figure out how to make these puppies. I did it by myself. And then when I when I get done with the big stuff, I've got down below, pan down below, beautiful. I've got these drawers that I've got little guys in. And little guys get little rats. I use the hook to pull the drawer open so I don't have to bend over. Grab the rat. I try to keep them on newspaper to keep them from eating as little aspen as possible. I know they still get some aspen. But I want them to get as little as possible. I'll push it back in. Look at that. Another boa file plastics original. Didn't have to copy from somebody else. And here's another one. Give him the rat. Ah, ah, ah. Oh. That is already dead. And I shove it closed. Well, that gives you the basics on how I do my feeding. Of course, sometimes I gotta do some feeding up high. And that requires a stool. And I open up my cage up high. Usually I try to lean away a little bit so I don't get nailed when I open the door. Open the door. Can you see the snake there? Snake, oh, she's thinking about it. She's just about to ovulate too, so she may not eat. This one normally a very, very aggressive feeder. He's just thinking about it. Sometimes, I don't know why this is, but sometimes if you get the point of it right in their face, they're more likely to get it. There, see that? We rehearsed this before. <laughs> beforehand. Ah, wait a little. She is just about to ovulate. So a lot of times they don't want to eat. But almost everything will eat during the breeding season. And I feed just about everybody during the breeding season. Actually, I try to feed everyone. They won't always all eat. But every two or three weeks during the breeding season, I'll feed them. And uh, big ones, big six, seven footers, will just get one large rat, maybe a jumbo. And the little guys will get a medium rat. And pretty much every time I feed, every two or three weeks. And uh, that's, uh, that's basically it. That's the end of this segment. <laughs>